50 years ago, going 100 days without talking to your loved ones far away might have been standard, but in today's age, it's an eternity. Imagine a world where the gateway to information, connectivity and opportunity suddenly vanishes. On May 3rd, when others around the globe were just a click away from information, Manipur was plunged into an unforeseen blackout, 100 days without a digital lifeline that so many of us take for granted. The ethnic conflict between the Methi and Kuki community had begun that day and the BJP-led government swiftly instituted an internet shutdown, citing concerns that the conflict would escalate. Over the days, the government continued extending this digital blackout. The most recent extension was announced on June 25th. India, after all, is the internet shutdown capital of the world. Meanwhile, the conflict extended too, claiming over 181 lives. But for us, Janims, uh, not even a single online class w was being arranged. In spite of the obvious fact that no more daily classes are being conducted in Infal, in the medical colleges, uh, you know, no arrangement has been made for us. We, we couldn't access to the classes because there was no internet uh, in Manipur. So like for us, we have been denied our education for almost three months now. Internet. When you say internet, internet is like a, a, a arms for us. So a, we can a, it. We depend on a, a internet for regional news, national news, as well as international news. From video calls with loved ones to education to commerce, our lives are intertwined with the internet. In its absence, the very heartbeat of society changes. Its rhythm disturbed. Its progress halted. But don't just take our word for it. News Laundry's team of two reporters and one producer have been in Manipur for the last two weeks, gathering first-hand accounts from those directly affected by the digital disconnect. Its repercussions reverberate across various facets of life. company worker grapples with financial instability, sinking into debt. Uh, normally I could uh, give my 100% uh, uh, production before the internet got shut down, but here in the internet uh, cafe, the internet speed is quite slow, uh, which is impacting my work from 100% to like 40%. A father misses the birth of his child. Uh, the shutdown happened on the 3rd of May, and uh, we had to leave our hometown our family, our wives, uh, so we, we left uh, Manipur on tent and uh, we have to uh, go to Mizoram uh, to get an internet connection so that we can work from there. So I went on uh, 10th of May. Uh, unluckily, you know, my first child was born on 13th of uh, May. So what I am trying to say is that uh, because of this internet shutdown, I miss uh, the birth of my first child. Uh, which was one of the most important events and magical events uh, that a person can have in uh, his life. A journalist worries about rampant misinformation going unchecked because the internet is down. And for journalists, the internet isn't a luxury. It's an essential tool to do their jobs. Internet helps us a lot uh, to get uh, the true information. Uh, because uh, with, a, with, a, with the absence of internet, you know, there is no, so many rumours. No? Everybody what everybody speak uh, rumors, so we can uh, we can get the true fact. Uh, so um, with internet, we can access uh, uh, we can get or we can inquire more about uh, the stories whether it is fake or uh, uh, truth. Medical students are trapped in an educational void; their futures hanging in the balance. This sentiment of abandonment and neglect is echoed by college students deeply affected by the crisis. Well, MBBS is, is a very tough, is a very tough course. It's a very tough profession, and you know we need we need daily classes. And right now we are unable to get it. We are unable to get uh, you know daily offline classes. And apart from that, and apart from that, we don't have access to internet, which is a very which has a very you know huge negative impact on our studies and on our life. 
you know, we are unable to, you know, proceed with our syllabus as well. You know, right now in this, uh, we are here in CMC, but the thing is, uh, there was no official arrangement made for us to stay here. But despite of that, uh, we, we just, despite of that, we want to continue our studies. We want to become good doctors. That's why we're here. But even so, there is no, you know, there is lack of faculty. There's lack of faculty members. We don't have, there are only four to five faculty members, honestly. So without the access of internet, you know, we are completely limbless, we're helpless. A businessman describes commercial disruptions caused by the shutdown. Essential operations have stalled, he says, and businesses are struggling to navigate the blackout. Internet has been closed a lot, because we are all here in the daily up-down. We can't work with mobile and internet. So the internet has been closed, we can go to the next level, we can talk to them, we can send them to them, we can send them to them. So it's the same as 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 the same. Before the internet, जो पैसे लेते थे ट्रांजैक्शन जो होता था कस्टमर के थ्रू या आप भी किसी को पैसे भेजते हैं वो कैसे करते थे आप कैश में करते थे या कैश में नहीं होता था इंटरनेट के बैंक के थ्रू होता था बैंक भी यहाँ काफ़ी दिन बंद रहा है और कस्टमर से भी ज़्यादा गूगल पे पैसा आता है तो वो सब बंद हो गया तो उससे प्रभाव तो बहुत ज़्यादा प्रभाव पड़ा है क्योंकि गूगल पे जो पैसा वो नहीं हो रहा था उधर बैंक भी बंद था बैंक से भी पैसा नहीं निकाल पा रहे थे कस्टमर तो उसे प्रभाव तो हम लोग पे बहुत ज्यादा प्रभाव पड़ा है हम लोग तो लॉस में चल रहे हैं सब बैठे बैठे आराम से टाइम पास कर रहे हैं एक तरह से बट दीज आर जस्ट एनेक्टोड्स दे हाईलाइट अ सिस्टेमिक स्टेट वाइड प्रॉब्लम ऑफ डिस्ट्रप्टेड लाइव्स एंड शार्टेड ड्रीम्स अ रिपोर्ट बाय इंटरनेट फ्रीडम फाउंडेशन एंड ह्यूमन राइट्स वॉच फाउंड दैट इंटरनेट शटडाउन कैन शटर द वेरी फाउंडेशन ऑफ सोसाइटीज सोशल एंड इकोनॉमिक राइट्स अ स्टूडेंट नॉट जस्ट लूजेस अ डेज लेसन बट परहैप्स अ चांस एट अ ब्राइटर फ्यूचर अ स्मॉल बिजनेस ओनर डजंट जस्ट लूज सेल्स बट द एंटायर लाइवलीहुड In turn, their families are impacted. The ripple effects are profound. In Manipur, the internet shutdown isn't merely an inconvenience. It ensures that crucial information about the ongoing violence is confined within the state's borders. It's about severe ties, missed chances and muff narrative. Manipur isn't only detached from the present, its very future tetters precariously in this imposed silence. Internet shutdowns aren't spontaneous. They're enforced through repetitive templated orders issued every five days, virtually making blackouts indefinite. But is this legal? In 2020, the Supreme Court in the Anuradha Basin case spoke out strongly against indefinite internet suspensions. It stressed the importance of the temporal and geographical limits. The court said, those orders should be publicized, ensuring transparency and permitting citizens to challenge them. In Manipur, the internet shutdown was allegedly partially lifted on 25th of July. But was it really? The relief was extended only to those owning broadband connections. Social media and VPN services remained blocked, and users also had to sign an undertaking that they would allow authorities to search the premises at their discretion. Given that 96% of internet connections in India are on mobile devices and use mobile internet connections to conduct banking transactions, real-time communications, work from home tasks, online education, and even healthcare consultations, this lifting barely scratches the surface. In India, justification for internet shutdowns range from preventing violence and fake news to preventing examination papers from being leaked. Does turning off the internet really achieve this? From the beginning of the ethnic classes here in Manipur, the internet has been banned by the government and ever since the internet, internet was banned, uh, the violence has not stopped. That means internet does not uh, reduce the violence. In fact, it continues in despite of the fact that uh, the internet service has been uh, banned by the government. So I don't think internet is uh, a big factor that, uh, that will, you know, has anything to do with the violence. Jan Ristak's extensive studies indicate that, ironically, Blackout strengthened unrest. Nishan Shah, in his compelling study, elaborates that internet shutdowns, instead of suppressing misinformation, often amplify it by creating closed networks where unverified information thrives. Government is thinking that now a conflict is going on in our state, so there may be some unwanted uh, news and say fabricated. Uh, informations through social media and all and that will increase the amount of casualties and eventualities and it will 
affect our people a lot. This is the idea of our Manipur government. But we have to check those incidents by using, say, other state machineries at the maximum level to safeguard the people's security. A local report from June 2023 exposes the adverse effects of this ban, from financial disruptions to the emotional toll it has taken on Manipur's residents. I could lose my job because I haven't worked for three weeks now and my uh, clients are asking me when can, uh, though they understand the situation, but my work is the priority at that moment. Without work, I couldn't get my salary. If I don't get my salary, that's my livelihood, that I'm dependent, uh, that my family depends on my salary. So I have to work, so I have to run from my hometown to use the internet in ISOL. And otherwise, I could lose my job. That's the insecurity that I'm having, losing my job. For locals, the effects are personal. Without platforms like WhatsApp, entrepreneurs like the one in our on-ground report from Manipur lose customers. They face transactional nightmares and worry incessantly about children's education in this digital age. Meanwhile, students are living through violence and conflict, struggling to prepare for pivotal exams, all without internet access. The UN has consistently expressed concern over internet shutdowns, emphasizing the grave human rights violations they induce. Access to the internet is not a mere privilege. It's pivotal for various fundamental rights, including education, freedom of association, and work. And these shutdowns? Rarely do they pass the proportionality test. Manipur is a state pulsating with traditions, stories, dreams, and aspiration. Now strip away the digital voice and what's left. Not silence, but a deafening outcry. In the 21st century, the internet isn't a luxury, it's a lifeline. We said India is the global leader in internet shutdowns. This isn't an exaggeration. In 2022 alone, out of 187 shutdowns across 35 countries, India accounted for 58% of them. That's 84 individual instances of shutdown in India alone. Coming in at second place, far behind was Iran with just over a dozen shutdowns. Internet shutdowns impact life at its core, hindering access to essential medical, financial and educational services. Often invoked under the pretext of public emergency and public safety, there lacks a clear justification or criteria making them susceptible to excessive and arbitrary application. Whether to curtail protest, prevent misinformation, the internet has unfortunately become a primary target for restriction. Manipur's ongoing 100-day digital isolation is a harrowing embodiment of these statistics and policies. Its suffering poses an urgent query. Isn't it time to reconnect Manipur and re-evaluate India's stance on internet shutdowns? 160 killed, families torn apart, a society in chaos. News Laundry has spent 20 days on ground in Manipur, reporting on gunfights, raging mobs and children caught in the middle of it. But there are so many more stories waiting to be told. Our latest is a tech story on the 100 days of internet shutdown the missed opportunities and the lives on hold. Check it out on News Laundry, forward it to a friend or relative, and join the army that pays to keep news free. Subscribe to News Laundry today.